Hello and welcome to this tutorial on Python. Today I'll be showing you how to animate and program a bouncing ball with physics, that is with gravity and friction and then also ending in a standstill because in real life when you throw a ball you have those effects happening on the ball and it will ultimately end up in a standstill. Now this is a part two of a previous tutorial I did on a bouncing ball which had no physics whatsoever, so it just kept going on and on, bouncing around the screen forever and ever. I will also do a part three where we can sort of bend the physics slightly with magnetism, but that will be coming up later. So what I'll do is I'll show you, I'll go do a quick run through of part one, and then what we'll do is I will show you how I went from this code here to more of a code which include physics here and then what I'll do is I'll run through each and every change that I did in the code and then we'll run each of the codes and compare the two. So for all of my bouncing ball tutorials for part one, part two and part three I'll be using TK Inter module and the time modules and that's what I've done in part one is, is I've imported those two modules and then what I've done is I've created a TK into a screen and then locked a canvas into that screen by um, doing calling the canvas function in TK into and then specifying the width as 300 and the height as 400 and then I've packed that canvas to TK into in a grid format. Also I've created a ball and how I've done that is created an oval with an equal height and width so it's circle, circular, and then I've colored it light blue. And the X movement here is X, and I've done it as equal three, that's three units along of this 300. And then the Y direction, that is three units of this 400. And that will be the ball movement. So that's the setup. Now we want the movement, and the movement happens in this while true function. and what will happen is this while true function will run over and over again and continue updating and then every time it updates the ball will move on the screen. So how we do that? Firstly, the first line we have is we have this canvas.move ball x and y. So the x is 3 and the y is 3. So um, every time the while true statements update the first thing it will do is it will update the it will move the ball by essentially updating the screen with x three units along and y three units up or down. Um, the next thing we need to do is constrain the ball movement to within the screen width of 300 and, and the height of 400 and we've done that by creating if statements. So in part one I put uh, the bottom of the screen is for the Sorry, the width of, yeah, sorry, I was right first time. The bottom of the screen is 400 because the height, remember the datum point in TK Inter is top left, so that's zero, zero. So the height is 400 and the, the, um, the, so the bottom is 400 and then the top is zero. And so every time it hits one of those, we need to reverse the direction. So we do that by typing y equals minus y. And what it does is it's positive movement which goes into a negative movement. And so that reverses the direction of the ball. And we've done exactly the same thing in the x direction. And then what we do is after we've got the constraints in and the ball positioning in, we update it update everything and then we use the time function to ironically delay this code from running because otherwise it will happen so quickly and so you actually need to in this well in my case you need to delay this whole movement otherwise it won't move realistically and so what we have here is the whole while function you will have the ball position updating and the if statements 
updating the constraints updating so that the ball will just continually move around in this sort of box on the screen and so if we run it we will see exactly that you will see this ball here moving around on the screen and it will move forever and ever so next thing we'll do is you've got to go from that to this you see that's sort of more of a bouncy motion and there's various things to consider here but firstly i will talk you through the sort of the first set of differences that i did and then we'll go into the physics and how i applied those and then we'll run it again with everything in it because at the moment i've taken a few things out so first thing i did was i split up this if statement so you notice we've got two here and if i go to this statement we have four here so that is the first major change that i did and also i've changed the movement from x to dx it just made more sense to me because in my mind dx is more of a directional movement in x rather than x being in my mind which is just a coordinate okay and then also what i did is i instead of having 300 here and 400 here as the width and height i put w and h and so i reference that here in my positioning so position 3 is greater than 400 it's exactly the same as position 3 is greater than or equal to h i just this slightly different it's just little nuance also here i've put y is equal to minus y i've just done dy is times by minus one does exactly the same thing so at the moment i've just i've it looks slightly different but at the moment it's just what i've said is is just changes that doesn't change the actual movement of the ball it's a change that i've done to make it look make it easy to understand and easier to read even though it's a bit longer I've also put r as the radius, I've separated r out as a variable as well. So all these changes do nothing to the movement of the ball, they just change how the code is written. So if we move on to, now if we move on to how I've included the physics, the first thing we do is, what I did was I just focused on the y direction. So if we have movement in the y direction, and then what I did was I added gravity and how I did that was I put a variable in gravity equals 0.7 and then down here I've put dy plus or minus the gravity um, value. So what that does is every time this while function updates this 0.7 will be applied. So remember how if it bounces up, it's the y value will be negative. So if you add gravity every time, gravity will be acting against the ball every time. And it will be acting going up and it will be acting with the ball going down. So if we run that, you will see that the ball will ever so slowly have a smaller bounce every time. So just look in the y direction at the moment, you see that the ball is bouncing lower and lower every time. You see that? It's very minor because I put it as a small value. And what you'll see here is when the ball bounce gets smaller, it will bounce more frequently, which is what is expected in real life. Is that it? Because that's what happens in real life. But then you will see a problem start to appear when it gets to, should be a standstill. There, you see that? It's now disappearing off the screen. So we need to resolve that. But at the moment, the y direction is, is looking good, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resolve that issue later on because it also happens in the x direction. So at the moment, I'm happy with the y direction. And so the next thing you do is we need to include some, you need to look at the X movement. So 
gravity acts in the y direction, uh, but friction also acts in the x direction. So what I've done here is I have done what I had previously is x equals minus x or dx equals minus dx, which would be the part two equivalent. And then I've multiplied that by friction, which is a new variable I've created here. So we have gravity in the y direction and we have friction in the x direction. But the difference is the friction is not continually acting on the ball. Friction only occurs if it hits the sides of the wall. So that's why I've only added it to um, the x direction. So if we now um, run the code, we should it would we only have an x movement here in the dy in the dx but actually gravity will act on it straight away bringing in a y movement and that should give us a really nice curve uh, let's make it a bit more pronounced you see that that is brilliant you see that there let's run it again there you see that that is the curve we're looking for So I'm quite happy with that. So we've got our curve in the x direction with friction and we've got our gravity acting in the y direction. So if we have them both, there, so it's fine. Look at that, see, it's looking really like a ball. How you'd expect a ball to move. Now, the problem comes when now the ball gets close to a standstill so now we need to find a way to have the ball standing still when you expect the ball to do that on the screen. So as we can see here, and then we will probably get a few problems. There we go. You see, we don't want that. So now we need to include a function which gets rid of that. And I have done that by creating a new if statement here. So what I've done here, how I found this problem and found this value here is I included print checks through each of those positioning. So, and then I ran this on the screen here on the right, my output. And these errors appear on the output because I've closed TK into in a way that Anaconda doesn't like. It's nothing to be worried about. Um, so yeah, just I love doing print checks and um, I, I can't rate them enough. So how I got around to creating this standstill is I've put if the position is at the bottom of the screen like this and the dy movement is less than or equal to two, then the x direction movement is zero, the y direction movement is zero, gravity is zero, friction is zero. So I just zero everything out. And that if statement only kicks in when these two conditions are met. So if we run that now, we have this ball movement moving, we have gravity affecting the ball, we have friction affecting the ball, and the, this is causing the ball to bounce lower and lower and lower. Energy is being taken away from the ball. And then what we should see is the ball end in a standstill. Here we go. There, see, that is our standstill. So I really hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. That is how you include physics with a ball. Check out my other tutorials. And if you want some reminder on part one, then feel free to check that out as well. I will be doing a part three later on, but I really hope you've enjoyed that and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, I hope to hear from you soon. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.